Hi, welcome to GTC, welcome to Santa Clara. We have so much to cover, so let's get going. Computer graphics is the driving force of the GPU. It is computationally insatiable. Recreating virtual reality is one of the most daunting computing tasks we know. And yet, on the other hand, it is an enormous industry. It is so hard to compute. And that's the reason why ray tracing has become, has been so popular in film. And it is the holy grail, the dream for computer scientists for the last 40 years. And so here's an example of it in motion. Let's take a look at this. Ooh. You think she heard us? Yeah, I think she heard us. What you just saw was completely rendered in real time. Now let's show it to you. But to really show them off, we need to bring in something even more shiny. This light is bouncing all over the place as it strikes these surfaces, figures out what the rendering equation is at that moment as it strikes that surface, accumulates it for the entire scene with all of these billions and billions of rays. Ladies and gentlemen, everything that you're seeing here is completely in real time. It's completely in real time, and it's running on one, one DGX station. What makes this special is for the very first time, we can bring real-time ray tracing to the market. You are also seeing deep learning in action. Without deep learning, it would be impossible to have traced all of those rays. We also are announcing today the world's largest GPU. The world's largest GPU. It's called the Quadro GV100. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the Quadro GV100. The world's first workstation GPU based on the Volta architecture. It also is the first one that has a brand new interconnect between GPUs called NVLink 2. All of the memory reads and writes and all the atomics work exactly the same. Software doesn't have to change. So these two GPUs working together, two GV100s, will become a revolutionary new workstation. These two GPUs combined has 10,000 cores, 10,000 CUDA cores, 236 teraflops of tensor cores, all used to revolutionize modern computer graphics. The largest frame buffer in the world, 32 gigabytes of HBM2 per GPU, two of them together working completely unified inside an application of 64 gigabyte frame buffer HBM2. Ladies and gentlemen, the Quadro GV100 with the NVIDIA RTX technology. <laughs> this technology is the single most important advance in computer graphics in the last 15 years. One of the best decisions we ever made was 15 years ago when we decided that a GPU, which was a graphics accelerator as a beginning, would become more and more general purpose. We wanted to become more and more general purpose because we felt that in order to create virtual reality, we had to simulate reality. We had to simulate light. We had to simulate physics. Well, we're at the tipping point, and the number of people who are jumping on top of GPU computing is really growing and growing at an exponential rate. We're almost up to a million GPU developers, up 10 times in the last five years. This is what a supercomputing rack looks like. It's much, much more densely populated because most supercomputers deliver a lot more power per rack, 20, 30,000 watts per rack. This is 600 dual CPU servers, 360,000 watts. And this is what it looks like if it was GPU accelerated. The applications that I love the most of all of the work we do in HPC is the work that we do in revolutionizing modern medical imaging. On the left is a 15-year-old ultrasound image. In fact, it hasn't changed very much over the years. Most ultrasounds that you see in hospitals still look like that. On the right is a brand new, a brand new medical imaging equipment from Philips Epic. It's possible for us to actually virtually upgrade every 
single medical instrument. This is the type of image that a doctor would look at when he diagnoses your heart functionality. This is 2D, but our body, of course, is 3D, so there is more information uh, from the scan that we can acquire. So when we switch to 3D, we see a more complete picture, like this, and we have uh, asked Deep Learning to interpret it for us. And now we can see the chambers moving across the cardiac cycle, the left ventricle moving across the cardiac cycle, and segmented very well. You've got to realize what's happening. There's an artificial intelligence network here that is running on the, on the original black and white gray scan that you saw. And from that scan, from that ultrasound scan, it inferred what this left ventricle, where the left ventricle is. It segmented it out. It segmented it out in motion, and it segmented it out in 3D. Today, we're announcing several big things. First, we are doubling our GPU. The Volta V100 is now 32 gigabytes of HBM2 memory. It's twice the size of what it used to be. Neural network models have now grown in complexity 500 times in just five years. And so, ladies and gentlemen, today, I would like to announce the world's largest GPUs. This is the world's largest GPU. This is 16 Volta equivalents connected by 12 brand new high throughput switches that the world has never seen. It's called MV switch. These 16 Tesla V100 equivalents each with 32 gigabytes creates virtually a 512 gigabyte memory. Not only that, these 512 gigabyte memories, the way you address the memory and the way that every single GPU could talk to the memory of another GPU, completely using the same memory model. The memory fabric semantic on our chip that connects all of the processors have been extended out of this chip out of the GPU, onto the MV switches, connecting each and every one of them. In total, in total, 14 terabytes per second of aggregate bandwidth. This is two. Two petaflops of tensor cores for AI on this GPU. The world's largest GPU. Let me show it to you. This, ladies and gentlemen, is the world's largest GPU. This switch has 2 billion transistors made of TSMC's 12 nanometer FinFET. This... <laughs> Great process. This, every one of these switches, and there are 12 of them, every one of these switches has 18 links, which are 8 bits wide, eight, 18 MV links, 8 bits wide, with a Surtees that's moving at 25 gigabits per second. 25 gigabits per second on just one signal. There's eight of them per link. There's 18 links on this one chip, and it's bidirectional. All together, it creates 7.2 terabits per second, or 900 gigabytes per second. What that basically says is that every single GPU, every single GPU can communicate to every other single GPU at 20 times the bandwidth of PCI Express. Isn't that amazing? Every single GPU can talk to every other <laughs> GPU. And all together, NVIDIA's largest graphics card. This is what it looks like. The largest graphics card. <laughs> the largest graphics card the world has ever made. What's inside it is 16 Tesla V132 gigs with 12 MV switches. And it's got this incredible back, what's called a playing card. It basically has 200 times. It has 200 times the bandwidth of the highest speed NIC on the planet. So all together, all together, ladies and gentlemen, it looks like this. This is the NVIDIA DGX2, the world's largest GPU, the world's largest adding card, two petaflops, 512 gigabytes, 350 pounds, and just beautiful. This, this is... 
And so what we've done is we've created containers to containerize all of these complicated softwares that are optimized into one container at a time. We've put them into Tupperwares, if you will. And by putting them into these Tupperwares, we put them up in the cloud. We call it the NGC, the NVIDIA GPU Cloud. The NVIDIA GPU Cloud is not cloud computing. NVIDIA GPU Cloud is a cloud registry of all of these containers. 20,000 organizations have downloaded our containers. It's running in clouds. It's running in data centers. It's running all over the place. These NGC containers are just completely fabulous. And the reason for that is because irrespective of what cloud you run on, it's exactly the same stack. The transportation industry is the largest industry, one of the largest industries in the world, $10 trillion large. And we believe that someday everything that moves will be autonomous or have autonomous capabilities. Safety is the most important thing. And so we at NVIDIA, we're dedicating ourselves to this problem. The grandest of computer problems. We are building a supercomputing infrastructure in our company. There's 660 petaflops of supercomputing horsepower already in our company. And so here's a whole bunch of different networks that we've created. This is perception network. You're seeing car detectors and the bounding boxes. You're going to see lanes. N not only do we detect things that we shouldn't, we shouldn't collide with, we also have to detect spaces that is safe to drive to. So ladies and gentlemen, this is the NVIDIA Drive Sim and our Constellation. And it is how we're going to bridge the gap between test, actual test driving and the trillions of miles and the billions of miles that we need to experience over time. Basically, in the future, you're going to be doing simulation as a development system because these robots have to work in a three-dimensional world. And so we create a three-dimensional world simulator, simulator we call it the Isaac Lab. In the Isaac Lab, we will develop the perception capability, the localization capability, the mapping capability, and the planning capability that is necessary for robots and autonomous machines to navigate these complex worlds. So ladies and gentlemen, this is the Isaac Robotics Platform ready to come to the world. So we're in holodeck, and we just created a virtual reality car. Tim is the virtual reality driver. He is inside this virtual reality car. He is inside the holodeck. Okay, so I think we, we've, we've seen this. Let's, let's take a look from, uh, from Tim's perspective for a second here, and uh, we can have him take off and actually drive the car. As you can see, he's blocked. There's a vehicle here that's doing some unloading. And uh, Tim, look down just a little bit so we can see your perspective. And he can, he can now operate this vehicle around this obstacle and maybe take it to a safe spot in a parking lot for us. And hopefully all... <laughs> so we're doing this really slowly and safely in a cordoned off area here. And he's going to try to turn off into the parking lot. Now you can see a little bit on the left here. There's this view is Tim is broader. in there, guys. <laughs> There's Tim right there, the invisible man. And, and Tim's view is very broad. He can see all three screens and get a full perspective of, of everything that's going on in the car. Look at that. He parked in a parking space. <laughs> nice job, Tim. <laughs> uh, hey, guys. Thank you. Thank you. You guys are amazing. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Ladies and gentlemen, it's great having all of you here. Thanks for your support, and have a great GTC.